Welcome back to the channel. Today we start a new build. It's a 2012 Lexus IS250 all-wheel drive. So you can use that three inches of ground clearance for some extreme off-roading or just to get out of your parking space in those cold snowy Chicago mornings. So this car is a little bit of a unicorn. It's nothing new to have all-wheel drive up here, but where I got this car from in Texas, all-wheel drive is kind of rare. So rust-free and all-wheel drive. Best of both worlds. But that, that's not even the most amazing part. Uh, it also has a clear title, which the internet has told me can't be possible when it's a total loss. But they're wrong again. So, that is still not the most amazing part of this car. What is the most amazing part of this car is that it came from Texas and the windshield isn't broken. So that begs the question, is it really a Texas car if the windshield isn't broken? I don't know. It's where I got it from. So... I don't know. Let's get it back to the shop, get it off the trailer, take a closer look at it, start getting it apart, start working on this thing. So it looks like whatever was behind it, most likely a truck, failed to stop at the time. It kind of went over the top of the bumper, so it hit right on the rear body panel, right in the tail lights and the deck hood. There was not a lot of support there, so it kind of crumbled up. And to make this one a little more interesting, it even got into the package shelf. So that's not something you normally have to replace, be something different. Uh, quarter panel, rear body panel, we'll see how bad the trunk floor is, deck lid, package shelf, back glass, rear bumper, and some tail lights. Should be it. Luckily, Scott's Lexus Emporium has our rear body panel and our quarter. He already sold the deck lid and rear bumper, but that car was an 08, and they do happen to be different, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, back glass, they're available everywhere. They fit 06 to 13, so, and they're cheap. Not really worried about that. We do have a little damage up there too. Looks like maybe it got shoved into another car. So we're gonna pull the front bumper off, straighten that out, repair the cracks in the paint, get a new license plate bracket. And this fog light is broken, so maybe uh, maybe it is a Texas car after all. I didn't get a broken windshield, I got a broken fog light glass. So other than the back end, a little bit in the front end, the car is actually in really good shape. It has brand new tires on it. Only has 111,000 miles and it has every option you could possibly get. Memory seats, rear shade in the back, navigation. That was pretty much it for these. Power tilt and telescope wheel. Yeah, there weren't uh, many options on these, but it seems to have them all. So let's get all this apart and then get it over on the frame rack and start pulling. So we'll start by pulling the trunk carpeting off of our deck lid here. We need to get all of our plugs off of here so we can get the wiring harness off because Toyota wasn't nice enough to give us a plug to take the whole harness with the deck lid. We'll disconnect the emergency release handle from the inside of the deck lid. And I'll tell you, I've had more trouble keeping victims, I mean haters, I mean passengers in the trunk since manufacturers started with these things. Now we'll pull the cover off of the hinge because our wiring harness goes up this side. Just a little plastic cover to hide everything. And we're going to start disconnecting all of our wires from the inside of the deck lid. Usually you can reach inside the deck lid and get to the back of those, but this deck lid seems to be a little smaller than it's supposed to be. So we're going to pry a few of them out. And we're going to do the pry and pray method instead of actually pushing the tabs in. So we'll bend this cover out of the way to get to our harness and use our free hand to hold the deck lid up so we don't get hit in the head with it. We can see our screws and we can unbolt it. There's one little push pin in it. And one more bolt. Now we can get to the rest of our plugs. And once our harness is off, we can disconnect our deck. Just four bolts that hold it on. We don't have to worry about dropping it out of the back window. And our deck lid's ready to come off. We'll set that in the pile. Now we can pry the exhaust out of its rubber baby buggy bumpers. 
just the exhaust hangers. We're going to take the back of this exhaust out of our way so we have room to get to everything underneath. See how bad that floor is. A couple more of these rubber baby buggy bumpers in the back. Two on each muffler. Got the shadow gnome holding it up. Kept telling him the back was heavier than the front. Guess he's got to learn the hard way. So now we can unbolt our exhaust. Because it's a Texas car, the bolts actually come out without heat and without braking. We can reuse those. And it's about to get real heavy, and the shadow gnome's going to learn why I told him the back was heavier. He'll remember the struggle. Now we can pull the heat shields down. There's just a couple 8mm nuts, and they're actually 8mm. If this had been an Illinois car, they'd be about a 2.56mm nut, or not exist at all. And our floor's a little wrinkled up underneath there. Should have left it on, it didn't look so bad then. We'll pull this heat shield off, and hopefully this side looks a little better. It wasn't really hit on this side, so it should. Now we can pull off our brackets for our exhaust hangers. Just bolt to the bottom of the frame rail. They're going to be in our way. Now we can pull the skid plate off the bottom. This covers up our paper canister. A couple nuts that are plastic. And a couple of real ones. Pull those out of there. Now we can see our vapor canister. We can start unplugging the harness. And all of our lines from this overly complicated system because, well, Toyota. We'll disengage the little plastic clip on this line and then we can twist our plastic lines off. There's another little plastic clip on this line. So we'll push that out of there to disengage it. And we could twist this line off. This one's not being very friendly. Must have some stand stuck in it. At least it's not salt. And now we can unbolt the paper canister. One last screw. Now we're inside the car. We can pull the back seat out. See if we can find any loose change and make this build profitable. Because you know I don't make any money doing this stuff. Push our seatbelts through. Come on. There you go. We found some glass. No money. Looks like this build's going to be a loss. Now we can unbolt the back of our seat and our seatbelts. Fish our seatbelt through the little loop that keeps it in place. Now we can open up our little loops for the shoulder portion of the seat belts. There's a little tab that you push and pull it up, slide the seat belt out of it, and we'll do the part that extends out same way. We'll unclip them back in because then we're just going to have to unclip them to put the seat back in later. So hopefully they don't get pushed in. Go over to the driver's side and do the same thing. have to do it twice because it has the extenders on it. Those Lexus engineers thought of everything to make their cars more refined. My life complicated. Our receipt should be ready to come out. So we'll just lift it off the back. So we'll take that out. We'll put that in a, we're going to need this later pile. Not to be confused with the pile. Now we can pull our absorber off of our bumper reinforcement. I am not sure how this made it all the way from Texas to here without falling off, but somehow it did. Now we'll pull our trim off of our door opening, quarter, and sail panel. I go and find other things to do in the middle of interior work because I'm not a big fan of interior work. So I need a distraction. That's why we went and did the back for a little bit. We got the lower piece off. With a little wiggle and pull, the top just pops out of its clips. We'll go put that in the pile we're going to need later. Now for the passenger side, we learned our lesson. We're just going to take both of these pieces off together. We'll wiggle and pull. Slide it out of its clip in the bottom. This is easier said than done. And we'll stick that in the pile. 
little climb in here. We're gonna take our package shelf apart because it has that shade in the back. It's two pieces. Normally these are one piece. So the front piece, we're just gonna pop it out of the package shelf. Just a couple push-in clips. Slide that out of there. We gotta get our seat belts out. The little plastic covers that pop off. And we can slide the seatbelt out of its tab. There's a slot where the seatbelt goes through. And in the center, you got to feed it all the way back through. We'll do the one on the driver's side. This piece will be ready to come out of there. Now we'll pull the back half off. This just slides out once that front piece is off. We can unbolt our shade for the back. Get that off of there. And we can unbolt our sub and plug it. And then we'll pull all of our insulation off of there. And get the seat belt out of it. Now our package shelf is pretty bare. Now we can pull our trunk carpeting out. A couple of little cargo trays on each side. This one looks okay. The other one's a little crunched. Pull out the cargo hooks. Now we can try to pull the trunk liner out. A little ahead of ourselves. There's a couple of little clips in there. Just push a little tab in and twist them. They pop out. At least if they're still there, they do. We get a little trunk light and plug that. And our liner should come out of there. The side pieces actually go over it. But we're still going to pull this piece out first. Because we don't follow the rules. So since I don't follow the rules, we just have to untuck it from the pieces on the sides. And it'll come out of there. We have to get the big stuff out of our way first. Now we can get our side pieces out. There's a couple of cargo hooks on the back. Can't get an impact in there because you know, there's not a lot of room on this side anymore. We'll just use a ratchet. Let's do this the old fashioned method. What our push pins. And we'll get this crunched piece of liner out of here. A little pinched in the quarter there. Hope Scott's Lexus Emporium has one for us. This side, there's a little more room on, but I guess I wanted to do it the old fashioned way anyway. So we'll use a ratchet. Pull out the rest of our push pins. And then our liner is ready to come out of here. Look away, safety experts. Air Double Scott is on the scene. We're gonna cut the back glass out. We're gonna use a bell razor blade so we don't actually hurt ourselves. And we're gonna take this glass out. We're not wearing any gloves, no eye protection. We are going raw on this one. So don't worry, keyboard warriors. You'll be just fine. You will survive. I am risking my life. But it's all in the name of good content, right? We're just gonna cut the urethane out of there. We're gonna take out what's left of this glass. Because as I'm working on it, I really don't feel like having glass raining down on me. So it's easier to take it out now. Then we'll vacuum out whatever's there. Yes, I did say vacuum. Don't get too excited, clean freaks. Then we don't have glass coming down on us the whole time or getting in the places we can't get it back out of. Even though it's probably already there. You will find glass in this car forever. There is no way around that. And I have taken interiors out of entire cars and you still find glass. I don't know where it goes, don't know where it comes from, but it always finds its way out eventually. So we're just gonna cut our urethane out of there, get rid of this, and hopefully there'll be less glass to fall out in the future.
I still haven't cut myself. At least I haven't seen the ambulance pull up yet. So maybe I don't need to wear gloves. Safety experts. One last piece. Now I can say I did this without cutting myself. Throw that in the pile. And now we're going to vacuum. Clean freaks rejoice. See, I do it when it's important. Because when the detail guy gets it, there's going to be an interior in here. So I'm going to get the glass out of it now. There's some tape up on the top that our glass is stuck to. There's some contacts I really don't want to suck up in vacuum. Those are for the antenna and the defroster. We just contact the glass and set the glass in there. So I do clean when it matters, not when it doesn't matter. Don't worry, when I put it together, all the parts will be dirty. And if they're not, I save some of that extra Arkansas dirt from our latest Silverado build, and I'll just throw that on there, just to annoy the clean freak, because I can. So to all the Toyota fans that claim that every other car on the planet rusts but not their Toyotas, well, the rusty quarter from where all the paint flaked off of it has determined that is a lie. It actually doesn't take much. A little rock chip and they start rusting. Every car rusts. Your Toyotas are not special. They rust too. Although at least with an American car, the metal that rusts is a little bit thicker, so it's got some more time to rust. This is... Pretty thin stuff and rusting after just a rainfall. No salt involved in this one. So I believe we've tormented the clean freaks enough and the Toyota fans. So now we're gonna get back to work. We're pulling the rocker moldings off of here. We need them out of our way so we can clamp this thing to the frame rack. There's one screw in the wheel well there in the back. There's another hidden screw underneath this little rubber weather stripping. It's a Phillips, so we'll just spin that out of there. You don't need to take that rubber weather stripping out of there. Just pull it down a little bit. There's another screw up in the front, hidden behind that weather stripping. Takes a little while to find it. They refuse to pull that weather stripping out. Spin that out of there. There's one more screw up in the front wheel well. Take that out of there. Now there's a couple of clips across the bottom. Just pop the centers out, pull them out of there. All the way along. Now we'll open up the doors with a wiggle and pull and little plastic clips that hold the top of it in, pop right off. They're reusable. We don't need to get any kind of pick in there or anything to disconnect them. They're pretty friendly. They come right off. Okay. Except for these two up in the fender. They're not playing nice. We'll get a pick in there. One down, one to go. Now we'll pull the rocker molding off the driver's side. Pull this screw out of the wheel well. There's the screw behind the weather stripping. We'll pop the clips off the bottom. And our screw in the front wheel well. And one more screw underneath the weather stripping in the front door. So when your body shop is charging you for frame labor for setup, this is what they're charging you for, in case you wondered. We'll wiggle and pull our rocker molding out of our clips. See if this fender wants to cooperate and let our molding go. 
it did. So our driver's side door gap is a little bit tight. It's not a Tesla, so this is not acceptable. Most of that's from when the quarter got pushed in. And our gap on the other side is a little wide. It's from the quarter being pulled around as the other side got pushed in. So hopefully when we pull it, all this stuff's gonna straighten out. We'll find out. In order to pull it, we gotta clamp it up. So we're gonna slide our clamps in here. Should order a pizza. It's really entertaining to watch the pizza girl mess with these clamps. One of these days I'm gonna capture it on camera. I should probably stop saying that. She refuses to do it. We'll go over the other side. There are specific points where it does clamp up to the car. I'm just getting it in the general area. And then as I raise it up, I can move them back and forth to get them where they belong. And if you wonder why I go to the gym, this is why. Those things weigh about 40 pounds. It's very awkward to get to them. Kind of reach under the car. So I go to the gym so I can do my job. And so I don't unalive people. So our clamps are about where they go. As they think they are. We'll raise the lift up a little bit. We'll center them. And then we'll tighten up the bolts down. And we'll clamp our car to the frame rack. We're ready to start pulling. We're just going to do some rough pulls, basically just so we can finish taking it apart. The rest of the parts that we haven't taken off yet are actually kind of crushed in there. So we're going to pull out the body panel a little bit, and we can get that inner trim piece off, and our spare tire, and our bumper reinforcement. We'll see how much goes with. Let's see if we can open up the door gap. Turn our Tesla here into a Lexus. This is the fun part, we don't really care. You just kind of throw it in there and pull. Whatever happens, happens. You really can't mess it up. We're going to get rid of all this stuff we're pulling anyway. That yeah, looks like enough for now. I'll pull our body panel out. We'll shorten up our chain a little bit. So we don't have to extend the ram all the way. And we're ready to pull some more. Stand behind it. Good thing will come out of there. There's nothing holding it in. Just kind of grabbing on there. Go a little bit. Move it down a little more. The body panel just rolled over our spare tire. So that's really what I'm trying to get out. We can rotate our tower. We can get a little more pull further over to the passenger side. And while we're doing this, we'll see if our taillight's fitting any better. We are pulling this body panel out. Now we're gonna pull out our reinforcement because it is all collapsed and those holes where I have the hooks are actually the bolt holes and they're not lined up anymore. So I'm gonna pull it and see if I can get them to line up so at least I can get a extension and a socket in there to unbolt this reinforcement and maybe even pull the rail out a little bit. But it was looking like I was gonna launch that reinforcement across the shop so I decided to let off. But it gave us enough that we can get this trim panel off the back and get our spare tire cover out of here. Weasel it out. We did let the air out of the spare tire. Help us get it out of there. And then we're going to unscrew our spare tire. It's a little tight to do by hand, so they did leave us a 17 millimeter, I believe it's a 17 millimeter nut on the top, so we can unbolt it. And we can pull our spare. It's a little bit wedged in. but it's coming out like it or not. 
So that's all we have time for in this video. Next time we come back, we'll do a little bit of pulling over there, get everything all squared up and figure out what we can save and what we need to cut off. So next time, we'll do all that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take